We are in New York City on the New York Stock Exchange floor, and we are about to talk to a newly public company called Day Day Cook. Their founder and CEO, Norma Chu, they are a direct-to-consumer food and content brand with a reach of over 60 million users. And we're gonna to talk to her all things about Asian cuisine and culinary experience. Let's go talk to Norma. All right, we are with the CEO and founder of Day Day Cook, Norma Chu. Norma, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So first and foremost, can you please tell us what Day Day Cook is? Sure. Well, at Day Day Cook, our mission is to promote the joy of Asian cooking to the world. And we do that through a growing portfolio of really cool, authentic Asian food brand that focuses on innovation around convenient, ready to cook and ready to eat food products. Awesome, and what was the inception? Because I know you have an interesting history with your company. Uh, it started out more so in the media space. So tell us the inception and also the evolution of Day Day Cook. That's right, I mean, the company started about 13 years ago and really with a simple idea, I wanted to create something that can inspire the future generation to continue to enjoy cooking. And I started doing that through creating a lot of short form videos and really sharing the content on social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, so that's the inception of the company. And for the first three years, we really focused on the Hong Kong market. And then later on, we expanded into mainland China market. Um, that's when we really started um, kind of exploring different things with the foundation being media, going into content commerce, incorporating some product recommendations into our video. And then later on, a few years back, uh, we started. I decided to launch our own branded product portfolio. Ready? I'm ready, lead the way. Great, so today we're gonna make a red curry noodle. Okay. And depending, are you a meat or seafood person? I like both, let's uh, let's try. Let's make both. Let's make both, let's make <laughs> right. both. Um, so we have some beef here, and I'm already cooking up the salmon. Okay. So we'll make two versions of the same noodle. Awesome. Right? So why don't you help me with slicing this beef? Okay. Yeah? How large of slices? Like how, oh, no, that's um, thinner, thinner. Thinner, right? yeah, there okay. you go. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Okay. And this is how oh, you do it. Is that, that too thin? Oh, man, that, you're, oh. you're really good. Chef Boyardee. Yep. <laughs> and then once you're done, you put this all here. What, uh, what trends are you noticing in the food industry? Because I assume there's difficulty getting Western culture to experiment with some of these recipes. So right. what, what trends are you noticing and how are yeah. you planning on tacking that? Well, there are you know, a few in really interesting trends uh, in recent years. Number one thing is three out of five consumers actually view the kitchen as like the new epicenter for trying new recipes. Um, and as they do that experimentation, the second trend is uh, during this consumer's discovery journey, um, East, East Asian cuisine is really popular. And finally, you know, the third trend is more people are just cooking at home. You know, 43% of the consumer find themselves cooking more at home versus 12 months ago. What got you interested in food because you were at a bank previously, <laughs> you're a research analyst, correct? So that's, right. that's a shift. That is. That's not a it's typical, a yeah, it's a big shift. So you're in the banking industry and then you, all of a sudden you start a food uh, media brand that goes into direct to consumer products. So talk about that shift and what you were doing prior to this and the interest in food. Yeah, I mean, I always tell people I have two true passion in life early on. The first one is the stock market. <laughs> and then the second one Classic. Is yeah. Classic. <laughs> like all of us growing yeah. up as teenagers, we'll yeah. just like, you know, watch the stock market. And second part, uh, huge passion is really cooking. I think it really started, you know, the passion for cooking really started at a very young age. And I really spent a lot of time with my parents and grandparents at home cooking. And I think that had a very early influence on me in terms of thinking cooking not just as a chore, but it's really as an act of care. So when you care about what you cook and what you eat and you share that with other people, I think you know, joy and happiness comes naturally. So I think that's something very important when we want to kind of continue that to share that joy. And also through cooking, you can also preserve heritage. So I think that's how you know, Dedico started and that's when I decided to make that shift. The best way to connect with someone is food. Absolutely. Um, I think that's what's fun about CDC. It's like, you know, I think we can always disagree on a number of things, but we can always find time to sit together and enjoy some really good Chinese food or Indonesian food or Thai food. Absolutely. So that's good. That's the that. first salmon. Beautiful, right? Beautiful. I love salmon. 
Okay. Now we have the first protein done. How's your noodle coming along? I think they're ready. Yeah? Hey, speaking of entrepreneurship, you mentioned that your father was a business owner. Did you always want to be a business owner yourself? No, um, I think I think early on I really didn't think about um, you know starting my own business, but definitely now that I look back, I think I have it that person you, yeah, yeah. influenced me, and also I have that personality. I think to be an entrepreneur, because in, at a young age I've always liked you know new things, trying new things. In middle school and high school, I started as hostess working for a private bank uh, as an intern, accounting firms, <laughs> teaching Chinese and English in Japan. So doing a lot of things. Yeah. And I think that having that kind of mentality of curiosity and always um, not afraid of the unknown, I think those are you know, some of the key components um, of an entrepreneur. So what are we doing now? Um, just gonna quickly season the beef a little bit. And before, perfectly sliced beef. Perfectly, they are really perfectly sliced beef. So you were not lying when you say you've been cooking at home. Yeah. All right. Cool. Why don't you help me cook this beef? Okay. All right. Okay. All we right. want. So we want the beef kind of like our salmon. We also want a medium rare, not overcooked, because it's also going to go back to the noodles. Okay. So just kind of do your thing. You like doing? Yeah. Do you mind if there I do you that? Go. That's perfect. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Welcome to the chef show. <laughs> this is going to be a cooking show. It will be. Now it's showing off. <laughs> so again, shifting to your company and the unknown and being an entrepreneur, your company has evolved in a number of ways, like we had previously talked about. Talk about some of those shifts and how it's uh, made your company perform better and uh, just have attracted more customers, users, whatever, uh, how it's enhanced the company. Yeah, I mean, I think that's uh, being open-minded and having that awareness of what's really happening around you, I think is really important. Secondly, I think it's always thinking on the positive side. So being aware that, oh, maybe more people are coming into this space or there's more innovation in this space, but thinking positively with a positive light and think about how can I be a part of that opportunity. And I think the third step is really going for it not just having an idea and not just having the awareness, but when you see the opportunity, you actually seize it and you go for it. So looking back in the past 13 years, right, I would say a few really important decision points. The first one, starting out in Hong Kong, where I was born and where I grew up, and venturing into a mainland China market, that was the very first big decision. A lot of time when I look back, um, some early investors really, you know, thought that was a really big risky move. But you know, How come? Because it's more competitive and I'm not locally from mainland China market, so I might not be a, a right fit, um, let alone being a female entrepreneur. So thinking back, my decision was, do I think I'm the right person to do it? Do I believe in that? And if I do, I should just go for it, knowing that it's a much bigger market and it's a much bigger opportunity and I can have a um, stronger influence um, with a bigger audience. Mm -hmm. The next step, we're gonna keep using this pan, and now we're just gonna All add some veggies to right. it. Okay. The lifeblood. Yeah. This garlic. is some chopped garlic and ginger. Okay. Are you a garlic and ginger fan? Yeah. So How what, often do you yeah? cook a week? Do you uh, like? Because you're again, you're a public company CEO. <laughs> Have you? Has it fallen since you started the company? How often do you cook? Because you're busy? Yeah, I mean, that is one thing that has changed. So I do cook a little bit less. But, um, you know, every time when I have the opportunity, um, even when I'm on the road, right? When I'm on the road, like in coming to the States or going to a place for an extended period of time, I always prefer to stay in Airbnb where I can actually so can have actually a kitchen yeah, and yeah. cook. You know, you're super, so good at it, I'll let you do this. Okay, you're going to yeah, toss I'm it. In. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, perfect. Um, well, not that perfect. <laughs> so um, eating out is great, but sometimes I need a break. I just want my own food, yeah. and I would prefer to just like, you know, cook at home. How has the role shifted for you from the start of the company to raising roughly eighty million dollars to then going public? Tell me how your role has changed day to day. Um, you know, in the beginning, I started the company with my, myself and. Couple, another co-founder mm -hmm. and a very small team 
and really just kind of executing on the early concept of this vision. But then over time, um, before we started raising capital, it was just really figuring things out. Um, and then a few years later, we decided to take on institutional investor money. So I had to learn different things. I have to learn how to fundraise. Um, what does the Series A mean? Right. How do you prepare to pitch to investors? What is a cap table? A lot of things to learn. Um, and even with just capital and fundraising, it evolved as the company became bigger. Um, so I think it's just a continuous journey of learning over and over again. So I think that has not changed and that's one of the constants of being an entrepreneur and being a CEO and founder of the company. Okay, so now we are at the final stage. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the heat up a little bit. Let's do it. We hear that? We hear Turn that? Turn the heat up. Yep. All right, we're, we're gonna go in. It smells a... very good already because the ginger and the and the garlic. And the garlic. Yeah. Add more. Okay. Let's make sure. Give you a good few do the, toss. Do yep. the thing. Do the, the thing. thing. Do right. thing. This is why I'm wearing an apron. Oh, amazing. Yes. Don't burn yourself. You got to taste the food. You got to taste right? the food. Yeah. Mm. Good. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. It's good. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I tried my best. Without calling anything out, is there an example of an obstacle that shows itself when you're looking to take your company public that you have to deal with directly as CEO? The listing journey itself was an exceptional experience. It really challenged my own mental toughness in terms of navigating all these different obstacles and staying level-headed and being able to map out the right strategy going forward and to continue to guide the team during this really challenging, I would say, roller coaster um, of you know, going public. But once you accomplish some, something like that, and when I look back, right, I think the biggest takeaway is I became a stronger and more prepared CEO as a listed company. And also, I think the entire team just became stronger and we came together during this time period um, that I would almost say, Having come, accomplished that, right, pulling off a successful IPO and list it on the New York Stock Exchange has really prepared the team to take on more challenges and opportunities going forward. You did nice. it. There I it did is. this one. That's beautiful. Look at this. Mm. I love it. It does have a nice spice to it. Yeah. I'm just joking. But it, it does have that spice to it, right? I love it. You did a really good job. It's very good. Right. Well, this is awesome. I'm really excited because I will. I am going to try this at home now that I've tested it awesome. here. Awesome. Awesome. Um, but I appreciate your time. No. And I really. Uh, I had so much fun. I know. I really admire your company. So I'm, I'm cheering for you and Day Day Cook. So thank, thank you. you so much for joining us. No, thank you so much, Will. Yeah. Thanks, awesome. Carla. Thank you. Oh. And oh. action. I'm so nervous. <laughs> it's a Celsius. It's a Celsius. It's a Celsius. I'm getting another can of Celsius. And for that reason, yeah? you've been chopped. I've been chopped? Yeah, you said you watch Food Network. Are my hands clammy? Uh, it's cold. It's nice. It's, uh... They're cold, yeah. They feel like almost clammy. Buy, sell, buy, sell. I'll take a million shares. Make that two million. My man, this is exciting for me. Uh, ready, Mike? <laughs>